part two. The camera decided to do its thing again. If you live in the northern part of the U.S. where all the missile silos are, in case you don't know where that is, it's North Dakota, South Dakota, probably a few other places that people don't know about. Um, major military bases, uh, Fort Hood would be one of them, I would suspect, possibly San Antonio with Lackland Air Force Base and uh, Randolph. Kelly is also here, but it's been shut down. Uh, Air Force bases that hold strategic... Um, Airlift Command assets, as in B-1B bombers, strat, strat bombers, uh, B-52s, basically our airlift capability, C-117s up in Fort Lewis McCord, uh, and there's a probably rather one, there's our tactical fighter wings, uh, basically the military bases I would suspect would be targeted, in addition to D.C. and New York. D.C. is self-explanatory, New York people might be saying why, well it's the... Uh, the bread basket for the financial network of the U.S. So you take out Manhattan or wherever the hell the New York Stock Exchange is, and well, you shut down that. Uh, even if we only have some small nukes go off, there will be like an EMP going off in the local area, which will overload the electrical grid. And we only have three grids in the U.S., the east, the west, and Texas. So... Uh, I don't know enough about the electrical grid to say for sure what would happen, but I would suspect in the local area there won't be any electricity. And if it surges down the line, then it may take down one of the major grids. If it takes down one of the major grids, all three of the grids go down. We're not talking about for a few weeks or a few months, it's years. And then we'll be trying to fight that electricity. So You should be concerned. Uh, and one of the preps that I have not done is the iodine or wherever that stuff is because uh, basically I, if nukes fall then it's you know there will be people who survive but I'm pretty sure I don't want to be one of them so, uh, if I'm not in the blast zone and I'm not downwind so if they hit the west coast it will blow east because that's the weather pattern if it hits the east coast it's less bad for the west coast and central but Anywhere in the west coast or the central part of the U.S. and it will blow east because of the weather patterns. So, and it's actually determined initially after the blast and then wherever the wind is blowing. So, uh, the best thing I could tell you is do some research and read some of the news articles and information out there about Nagasaki and that uh, Hiroshima. Realizing that those nuclear bombs are about one tenth, one one hundredth, or one one thousandth the size of the nuclear bombs we have now. So keep that in mind and in consideration when you're looking at uh, if your proximity is to something. Also realize the Mississippi starts up in the northwest almost. I want to say it starts in Montana maybe and then works its way. So if there's a bomb in that area, and it, it affects the water, it's going to go all the way down the Mississippi. The further down the Mississippi, the more diluted and less radiation, but it will be poisonous. So, uh, the guy talked about dosimeters and stuff. Um, that would be a good thing to have because you can only take like 50 rads and then you're basically going to die. Uh, he didn't say that, but it, I think the number is 50 rads. So, uh, double check that because I don't I don't remember for sure anymore. But uh, having a a a way to a way to detect the radiation probably wouldn't be a bad thing in the event that there is a nuclear war. I saw another thing about bunkers and the radiation safety, and uh, I don't have that capability here. And um, Right now, I don't have the money to invest in it, so it would be a good thing to have. Basically, a storm cellar where you're not above ground is going to provide you quite a bit of protection. Uh, so if you have that, then you're set. So uh, I don't know what else to say. I did do some work on my wife's old truck. I put it back together. I'm waiting on a part to show up, and then I'll have to have the exhaust fixed. And then her truck will be something we can drive again which it hasn't been for almost two years so uh, I would highly recommend
topping off your gas tank every two days at least till you see where this is going to shake out at because whatever you have in your gas tank assuming your vehicle runs may be all you get to get to wherever you want to go like I'm going hunting tomorrow I will probably uh, will probably get gas on the way up where I normally stop at that's enough gas to get me all the way home if I need to and then if I catch some stuff on the news on the way back I may stop and gas up again at the same spot just on the return trip so uh, Don't know what else to say. Don't know what else to give you guys as far as information. Um, I will do a video once I start doing my, my garden. The plants are going to have to stay in the guest bedroom and get watered every day. And then hopefully they don't, they don't die before I get them in the ground. Uh, humidity is supposed to be high. My grapevines and raspberry and blue, or blackberry bushes are outside. They should be all right. Uh, I guess that's it. This is going to be two short videos, way longer than I expected. Stay safe, keep your ear to the ground, sift through the information, uh, you know, check everything someone says. I can tell you that there are pieces to the chess game that are being moved that are not being talked about. Chief Trepper, out.